I want to thank you for joining us today for our Tuesday Bible study. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this privilege of opening up your word. We can actually read what you want us to see, what you want us to hear, how you want to touch and transform our lives. So be with us as we open up the book of James this day. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're looking at the book of James, and if you might remember, we mentioned several things about James. James is, again, the anti-Pauline book. In other words, anti-Paul. He's maybe not necessarily against Paul, but against the abuse of Paul, or however you want to say that. But it is the anti-Pauline book. And remember, Paul was all about it is by grace you're saved through faith, not of works. But James is like, are you crazy, Paul? You better make sure you better tell them that they've got to work. If you are saved by grace, then you're going to be showing and demonstrating this. And so this theme of works runs through the entire book of James. And it just seems like such a, uh, such a contrary thing compared to what Paul was trying to tell us. Um, so with that in mind, we look at today in the theme of work, work, work. You've got to do something runs through today's lesson. Now, today's lesson follows on the heels last week we, when we talked about last week's lesson. He was really, uh, James, James was confronting teachers. Anybody who thought that they had something to teach, and you might remember, his concern was that a lot of teachers were manipulating people to really bad behavior and bad acts, uh, and that they would be held accountable. Now, again, when we think of teachers, and oftentimes in the Bible we think, oh, they're doctrinally teaching people the wrong things. That's not James's primary concern. His primary concern is those who are using their position and authority as teachers to manipulate people to violence, okay? The politicians of the world, whatever, encouraging and egging people on. And uh, his primary concern is that folks who do that are going to be held accountable that is not fruit worthy of the Spirit of God. So, rather than leading people astray, he says that we should, in this week's lesson, demonstrate wisdom and understanding. So these are going to be the things, oh, I'm running out of room, so we'll just say wisdom and understand. <laughs> okay. So these are the things that are going to really form the linchpin. And again, remember also overarching linchpin is that works. You need to work in some way. Uh, so be wise, be understanding, and demonstrate this wisdom and understanding through what again? Through your works. Because you can have all the wisdom in the world. You can spit out all the wisdom out of your mouth. But if you're not following up on that, if you're not acting in a way to demonstrate that wisdom and that understanding that you have, um, then what good is it? Now, I'm, I'm curious about this word understanding. Once again, it is our reflexive, natural thing as Christians to say, oh, he's talking about doctrine. He's not talking about doctrine. He's talking about understanding each other. James is all about works and relationships. So you notice this every single time you actually dig into James. Again, our reflexive thing is, we got to get the right doctrine. That's not what he cares about. He's concerned about the right action. Not the right doctrine but the right actions, that we demonstrate wisdom and understanding through our works, and it leads to reconciled relationships. Okay? This is what we're going to see in today's lesson. So you already know today's lesson. I've just told you what it's all about. I want you to make sure you frame your understanding of the word understanding through not a doctrinal lens, but a relationship lens. Okay, so let's read this for today. And then we'll break it down a little bit. I'm going to keep that on there while I'm reading it, and so maybe you can hear it this way. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show it by his good behavior, his deeds, and gentleness of wisdom. 
But if you have bitter jealousy, selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant, so they'll so lie against the truth. The wisdom is not that which comes this this wisdom is not that which comes down from heaven, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, peace loving, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy, good fruits, impartial, free of hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Did you hear anything about doctrines here? Nothing. It's all about relationships, right? What is the source of quarrels and conflicts amongst you? Is the source not your pleasure that wages war in your body's parts? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. Again, it's not about doctrine, it's about relationships, right? You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask in the, with the wrong motives so that you may spend what you request on your own pleasures. <laughs> you know, I used to have, I'm going to stop here a minute, I used to have a friend who, uh, name it, claim it type of person, he said, ah, all you have to do is you claim in faith, you want a million dollars, you'll have a million dollars. And I said, well, why don't you have a million dollars? Because I don't want it. <laughs> That's bull. Who doesn't want a million dollars? You know, because, again, the name of claimant folks would have you believe that you name it. You want a million dollars, you'll get it. There's something wrong with your faith if you're not asking and you're not getting it and so forth. But it's such a greedy theology and doctrine. We're not asking to give it away. We want it to surround ourselves with wealth and prosperity. <laughs> See how sick that is? James is taking on the health, wealth, and prosperity doctrine. All right, verse 7, submit therefore to God, resist evil and the devil, he will flee from you. Come close to God, he will come close to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit more. So we've already said that James wants us to seek wisdom and understand that it will lead to good works, that leads to restored relationships. He's not concerned about doctrinal concerns. He's concerned about our behavior and how we relate to one another. Because ultimately, isn't that who Jesus is? I think this is where we in the church go astray. We go astray because we're concerned about doctrinal purity rather than about relationships. Jesus is all about them, their relationships. That's the whole point of Jesus Christ. That should be our whole point. But you have churches and congregations and pastors beating each other up because they don't measure up to my style of doctrinal purity. He doesn't care about this. He cares about this. Okay? So he lists those things. Again, we're about wisdom and understanding. He lists those things that are at odds. Let's put this. Those things that are at odds. with this. And did you hear what he said? He said, bitter jealousy. What else did he say? He said, selfish ambition. What else did he say? Arrogance thinking you're somehow better than everybody else. Let these sink in. One more. He said, lying about the truth. <laughs> Every politician. Okay. <laughs> right. How do you know if a politician is lying? Is he opening or she opening her mouth? Then they're lying. Okay. Right. All right. These are the things that do what? They break our relationship with other people. Remember, this lesson is all about relationships, 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 relationships. Jealousy, selfish ambition, arrogance, lying about the truth. All of these things 
break our relationship with other people. And oh, he uses a word. This is not a spirit from God, but this is demonic. Oh my goodness, this is inspired from the wrong place <laughs> in the transcending kingdom, okay? This is in the, the bad place, not the good place that inspires this type of behavior. I hate to say it, we all have this. You got this, I got this. Oh, there's no question, I've been very jealous of the success of other people. I have selfish ambition that's all about lifting me up, and I'm arrogant, you know, and, we, and I'll, I'll be frank with you, we act in a very arrogant fashion, but the truth is, it hides a lot of our insecurities. People are strutting around and really arrogant about themselves. This all is at the expense of other people. This is what James's concern is. We act this way, it causes strain in our relationships. He goes on, verse 16, uh, talks about this, what it does, where jealousy and selfish ambitions exist, there is disorder. There's chaos. This creates chaos. If everybody in the world acts in this manner, which, by the way, we all do to some extent, it creates chaos. Sin is sin is sin is sin. It doesn't matter what it is. It creates broken relationship. That's what sin is all about. Some people, I know some people, in particular, like in our denomination, other denominations, have become very liberal. We don't like to talk about sin because it makes people feel bad. We created chaos in this world. It's not about those needling little things These are the, uh, that we do. I mean, sometimes we fixate on certain personal behaviors that really have nothing to do with brokenness of relationship with others. It's a sin if it breaks relationship with others, if it breaks my relationship with God, if it breaks my relationship with God's planet, if it breaks my relationship with myself. Okay? It's one of the things that arrogance does. I just mentioned to you a little bit ago about how arrogance is really hiding and masquerading and covering up our insecurities. So we're lying to ourselves. We're breaking our... Arrogance not only breaks our relationship with others, but it also breaks our relationship with ourselves. We don't... We don't stop to really take a look at that tender child that's inside of us. We're propping up ourselves at the expense of being at peace with ourselves. So these things, James says, they're all bad. Big surprise, all right? Because they're not wisdom, they're not understanding. So what is wisdom? Well, let's take a look at that. What is, oops, what is wisdom. I'm not going to write all these things down. You can go in verse 17 and look at them. But he says, uh, verse 17, wisdom is first pure. It is second, peace loving. This one we're going to come back to probably again. Peace loving. Peace-loving people reconcile relationships. Again, not about doctrine. It's about our activity and how we respond to one another. Peace-loving, gentle, reasonable. Boy, we can't even talk reasonably today to each other. This is why we're at odds with each other. Uh, there are family members we can't talk to right now in my family, my wife's family, and and so forth, because we're all angry and upset each other over COVID and about behaviors and whether you do and do not have a shot and, you know, all these types of things. Oh, all right, say, yes, I have a vaccine. There you go. I think it's the best thing to do. There you go. Doesn't mean I stop loving people who don't. Well, the people who don't and refuse to sometimes stop loving me. Okay, we got to be reasonable. It's about relationships. We need to be full of mercy, he goes on. Good fruits we need to be impartial, free of hypocrisy. Okay? These are the things that James says reflect wisdom and understanding, not about relationships, or not about uh, doctrinal purity. He goes on, verse 18, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, 
by those who make peace. I told you we'd come back. That's verse 18. I told you we'd come back to this peace-loving thing. Because, again, he's really driving it home in verse 18. This is kind of linchpin, the key to the entire portion that we're reading today. So let me read this to you again. The fruit of righteousness is sown in, the peace by the, in peace by those who make peace. So, again, he's coming back to this peace thing and saying, this is the key. Because righteousness, well, let me write this word down. Because he's defining for us what righteousness is. is righteousness is reconciliation making a right relationship between you and me the only way we can have a right relationship is if i humble myself i come in gentleness and i come offering peace to you let's have a right relationship the church needs to find a way today in this caustic society to reach across with peace. Instead of fighting about issues and doctrines, we need to come in gentleness and peace, offering a right, reconciled relationship with each other. Peace loving. This is how we're going to transcend the chaos of this world today. James goes on in chapter 4, and as I said to you, this, this is really the key. I don't want to spend too much time looking at verses 1 to 7, because, or 1 to 8. Uh, they're, it's not that they're unimportant, but this is verse 18 of chapter 3 is the most important thing. He goes on to offer a proof of what happens, anecdote I guess you'd say, of what happens when we don't seek righteousness. And so he says, what is the source of quarrels and conflicts? It's a sort, not the source, is it not the source of pleasures that wage war in your body's parts? So he's basically saying that, uh, those things that he mentioned before, remember those activities that are at odds with understanding, wisdom, jealousy, selfish ambition, arrogance, lying about the truth, and so forth. These things create chaos, divide us, prevent us from having right relationships. So he uses this as an illustration. We see the chaos all around us. And why is it caused? It's because you're seeking other things in wisdom and understanding and right relationships with each other. And so then he finishes with this. How are we going to get to this point of right relationship with each other? Well, verses 7 and 8. Uh, submit to the will of God, he says. By submitting to God. Humbling ourselves to God's way. That we might be people of peace. This is not an easy thing. <laughs> See, this is, this is what's so easy, I think, in some churches where they make sin only about my personal behavior rather than how do I respond to others. Sin has nothing to do with, you know, this behavior or that behavior or this whatever, these, these, these needling little things that some churches fi fixate on, okay? It's all about my relationships with other people. Am I reconciled? Am I, am I working towards reconciliation in my relationships towards others? That's why it's so hard to be a Christian. It'd be easy if, it's, if, if we're simply don't smoke, don't chew, don't go out with girls that do. Oh, I'm not a sinner. No. That's not what the Bible talks about about sin. It talks about am I reconciled with you? Am I at peace with you? Am I working to be at peace with you? Is there a gentleness between us? If I'm not working at that, that's what sin is. So we need to stop justifying ourselves and patting ourselves on the back. I don't smoke, I don't chew, I don't drink, I don't go out with girls to do, therefore I'm a good person. No. If we're not in right relationship with each other, no, we're not. You can be just as selfish in your ambition even though you don't smoke, don't chew, don't drink, or go out with girls to do, okay? You can still be very selfish in your ambition. 
and destructive in this world. I see it all the time. People who parade around as Christians. But they're not concerned about this. They're only concerned about parading their personal behavior in the faces of other people showing how good they are. We need wisdom and understanding so we have right relationship with each other. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless us this day as we work the hard work of reconciling relationship with one another. So I pray that you would bless all those who are watching this Bible study today and bless me, help me to be more concerned about right relationship be fixated and focused on that because this is the way of the kingdom of heaven. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.